Well, from the time that Bay Point was created as a town in 1910, it was really a boom town. There were a lot of people that were uh, living there. It was a very prosperous place. There was a house here and a house there, and you'd go from house to house to see people and visit because everybody knew everybody in town. It was a wonderful town to grow up in. I don't believe there was but maybe one or two people that ever had locks on their doors, and, and, and that's the way the town was. There was a, a butcher shop, and there was a toggery, and uh, in those days, you didn't go down to the store. They, they came around and they took orders with their <laughs> notebooks, and, uh, and then they delivered. Walter Van Winkle, he owned quite a bit of property around town, and he also owned the little town of Clyde, which had a big hotel. So Walter Van Winkle he had the theater, he owned the theater. He owned everything, the light company and the, the whole smart zoo. The uh, Bay Point Light and Power Company was owned by Walter Van Winkle, and uh, uh, along with the uh, light and power that he owned, he also had uh, uh, a regular general store in there where you could purchase anything you wanted. Well, Walter and Eunice Van Winkle bought up a lot of the land in town and really became the backbone of Bay Point. They had a big home up there on the top of the hill near the old Bay Point Reservoir. Uh, Walter Van Winkle was the founder of the Chamber of Commerce in Bay Point. He was dealing with guys, uh, people that, uh, you know, weren't as uh, 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 astute or whatever as him. Mr. Van Winkle had something to do with the bank that finally went broke uh, in the 30s during the Depression. Well, the Depression, I believe, it hurt everybody, let's, let's face it. And the Coos Bay Lumber Company had shut down and, and there was no more jobs there anymore. The $40 I had in the bank was gone. All I got was $6 months later. I started going to Mount Diablo High School and went there in my junior and senior year and graduated. And in those days, there was a two pool halls there, Peterson's Pool Hall and Louis Monterey's Pool Hall, and that was the kids' recreation at that time. And in those days, my brother Otto became a pharmacist, and so Otto and I didn't have any place to live, and we lived in back of the drugstore for years, and uh, I helped him there in the drugstore. Uh, in the 30s, during the Depression, we had no, uh, no money. As the Depression hit, and as business dropped off, they were looking for ways to uh, get business back to Bay Point. And so they came up with the name Chicago, after the famous Chicago in the Midwest. I think it was right around 1930 when they decided to change the name of Bay Point to Port Chicago. Well, the Chamber of Commerce put together a lot of meetings and got a lot of community activity going and had a lot of hoo-ha over changing the name and they went all out with a public relations program to create a new image for Bay Point and to create the town of Port Chicago. Mr. Van Winkle thought that would stimulate business and see since he owned a lot of property and theater and businesses around there and most of Clyde and the big hotel out there he thought that would bring businesses in. They made such a big public relations deal out of it that they actually had a funeral. And they had a a, a kind of like a, a big cleanup. It was kind of like a, a, a funeral uh, sending off the town of uh, Bay Point and, and making it Port Chicago, a kind of a promotional deal uh, from what I was told uh, later on. When, as a kid, I could care less what it was, but they were changing the, the name. 